Hello, uh, it's Elliot Lindsay. I'm the implementation biologist in Calgary, and uh, I'm actually supposed to be a day off today, but we got a bunch of rain and snow, and I could not help myself. I had to come out here to uh, Kingbolt Creek to see some of the beaver dam analogs that we built last year uh, to see if they're holding back water. And uh, yeah, check this out. What? This is super exciting. So this is a pretty big BDA. It's it's really just sticks and rocks and soil, just like a beaver dam would build, or a beaver would build, sorry. And we really wanted to uh, build it here to pond up this whole area upstream of the dam and reactivate some of this floodplain area in here where there's all these willow and poplar trying to establish. Uh, and that's exactly what it's doing. So you can see there's probably a good foot and a half of water in here. There's all these, uh, these are some juvenile poplar, balsam poplar that are growing on this old floodplain. And now they're gonna be getting lots and lots of water to start the summer off right. So all this water is soaking into these floodplain soils. And just look at the difference between where this new floodplain is gonna be and this incised floodplain downstream. It's almost a meter higher. So this is incredible. And this is the first one I've been to. I haven't even been upstream yet. Here I am at the next one. Check this out, this is all built by volunteers, by hand. Blood, sweat, and tears, look at it. Floodplain, reactivated, look at all that water soaking into the ground. This is awesome. Here's a look from the upstream side. Uh, look at all that ponding water. So these willows, they're getting really old and sort of decadent down here. They're not getting a lot of water these days. Look at all that water. This whole little floodplain is just full. And then look at the next upstream structure. Bam! Multi-threaded channels, water all over. This is why we say structure forces complexity. Look at all the complexity here. We got a run over there, some riffles, pools. Magical. I'm just standing upstream of that last structure we saw. It's like a, almost a meter deep in here. Look at all that water. Thousands and thousands of liters of water soaking into the floodplain. And normally, this water would come into this channel and it would just pass right by. Just go right downhill on its way to Trout Creek and that's pretty much it for the season. Then it's at the mercy of rain. And you can see, this is a great example here. We'll go to the next structure. I think we have uh, 10 or 11 here. You can see, like really clearly here, all that floodplain that's being reactivated by this structure. So we're basically forcing this incised channel like this. You can see it's cut down. We're using these structures to build that stream bed back up onto these abandoned floodplain terraces like here. And you can see how well this works. This is literally just sticks, debris, rocks, and untreated fence posts. If there's any beavers watching, uh, feel free to comment on our uh, design choices. If you won't take it personally, let us know. Here's a pool here. This is well over a meter deep. This was dry when we built it, like dust. Super cool. Look at all that water. This is another super cool spot. So this is just like a beaver dam does. Look at all these diverging flow paths, soaking into all these soils. This is all willow in here. In a normal spring, they might get a little bit of a drink for a couple of weeks, maybe a few days, depending on what the snowpack's like. But now they're getting soaked thoroughly. All this ground is getting soaked full of water. Here's a big beaver dam, beaver dam analog, excuse me. Again, big, huge pool here. This is why we put it here, because there was kind of a nice big hole. We could see that there was all this floodplain surface that we wanted to reactivate, and guess what? That's what it's doing. Some of the features that we have with these beaver dam analogs is that on the downstream side, we build this kind of called a brush mattress, and that's to imitate uh, the downstream side of a beaver dam, and what it does is it dissipates this flow energy that's coming over the crest of the dam, and it spreads it out through all that roughness, 
it keeps it from undercutting the front surface of the dam there. So you can see the water spilling over the dam crest and then it's tumbling down all this, these spruce boughs, sticks and debris and mud. And all that energy is being dissipated. All right, we're upstream a little ways now. We're getting close to the end here. Look at all this. All these willows are gonna be getting a nice long drink. All these floodplain soils are saturated. You can see, look at all the green grass here. And all the water you see in the dam is actually just a fraction of all the water that's actually being stored right now in the ground. So we're basically filling up this floodplain sponge and that's gonna ooze water slowly out. After all this spring runoff is gone, if we have another dry summer and we don't get a lot of rain, these floodplain soils are gonna be able to slowly release some of that water to make it a little less severe of a drop off in flow later in the season. And that's gonna benefit the cattle that are grazing here, wildlife, birds, uh, fish, if, they, if we can bring them back to this area. So really incredible, amphibians, you name it. Yeah, so it's really easy to see behind me just how much water is being stored by one of these beaver dam analogs. And what's really exciting about this kind of work is that we didn't need engineered designs for this. We didn't need an excavator. We didn't need any heavy equipment. Um, what we did need is a handful of really hardworking volunteers for a few days to cover several hundred meters of this creek and ultimately store thousands and thousands of liters of water and reactivate some of these abandoned floodplains. So, this is the kind of tool that we can really scale up to the watershed scale very cost effectively, very quickly, and it's a really good answer to some of our flood and drought issues that we're having without the need to build large river engineering projects like dams and reservoirs that have irreversible harm to some of our watersheds. So this is a pretty exciting alternative.